Welcome to the making of Vindolanda Venture. My name is Barbara Burley, and I'm here to tell you more about the project Digital Biographies and its output, Vindolanda Adventure. I'm the curator as well as the head of education here at Vindolanda and the project manager for this project. The Vindolanda Trust is an independent charity with education at the heart of what we do. And this goes from educating about the Roman past uh, through to how we can look at the past in the future and the developments that we need in order to do this. We actually have a multi-leveled interpretation model that we use and we try to employ as many types of interpretation as we can in order to give a holistic view of the past. And this includes digital. But we don't have the skills to do this on our own. We have to go out to our partners in order to make projects like this better. And as example, in this project, we've worked with Claire Stocks from Newcastle University, and she's gonna to talk to us in a few minutes about the impact and engagement projects um, that Newcastle University use, as well as how did we actually get to this project? Because this isn't the first time that this partnership has come into play. And then we're gonna hear from Joanna Green from Creative Assembly, one of the largest game studio in the UK, who will talk about their involvement as well as CA's le legacy project. And then finally, we're gonna hear from Isaiah Agbanji. He's our game designer about the process he's gone through in order to develop the game. And then I'll come back and talk about some initial stats as well as feedback from our test audiences. But first, I'd like to just give you a little bit more information about how the trust started this project. None of this would have been possible without our funders, so a big thank you to the Art Fund and the Reimagine Grants. These grants came out of the pandemic and helped museums like ours to try new developments and diversify their activities. So a big thank you to you. Once we had the money, we needed to develop a narrative. Who did we want to reach and what stories would appeal to them? Our chosen target audience was seven to 11 year old children, or in England, our key stage two children. The reason for this is that in England on the national curriculum, they actually study the Romans at this age. And we thought from an educational point of view, this would be a good starting point. And what a story would appeal to them was another question that we had to ask. And this was interesting because we knew that we wanted to, any story that we had to be based on solid archeological and historical facts from the site. And so we looked to the writing tablets. And if you want to know anything more about the history of the site or about the writing tablets themselves, please check out our other films on our YouTube channel. From an educational point of view, we chose the birthday party invite. And this is a letter between two women, Claudia Severa, and she writes to her friend Sulpicia Lepidina, who is the commanding officer's wife here at Vindolanda, and invites her to her birthday party on September 11th in order to make her day more pleasant. And we thought this was a lovely way that we could start out with our narrative because we still do this today. Don't we all still go to birthday parties in order to make the actual person's day more pleasant by our company? And we do feel that this is a great way to help children to identify with the past by bringing out something that they still do. Once we had our initial narratives, we decided our next step was to employ our artist, Mark Hoyle, to create reconstructions of our two characters, Lady Lepidina and Tagamas Vexillarius, or the Standard Bearer, both historical characters from the Vindolanda writing tablets. It was great to work with Mark because he's not only a fantastic artist, but he's also an archeologist. So mixing the two helps us to have a really good um, end product. We asked him to create the two characters similar to the Creative Assembly's Total War um, Rome characters. Our next challenge was to employ our games designer. Isaiah is a master's student at Newcastle University, and throughout his process, he was mentored by Creative Assembly, which was vital in his development as a designer. The project wanted to foster an emerging designer to help build their CV and future prospects. And so without much further ado, we will hear from Claire, Joanna, and Isaiah. Over to you. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you in this short presentation about the role of Newcastle University in the project Vindolanda Adventure, which was a fantastic opportunity for us to work with heritage and industry, that is the Vindolanda Trust and Creative Assembly. 
Now, my name is Dr. Claire Stocks and I am Senior Lecturer in Classics within the School of History, Classics and Archaeology. Now, I'm a Latinist by trade uh, rather than an archaeologist, but working with this project has given me a great opportunity to broaden my own research uh, from studying texts about the past to thinking about how stories from the ancient world can have relevance for us today. Now, my work at Newcastle University isn't just about researching texts on the ancient world. We at Newcastle also like to be involved in something called impact and engagement work, where essentially we want to show that our research can benefit more people than those who are studying or working for degrees in classics, for example, within the university sector. This means that we want to engage with the general public and we want our research to have an impact upon how they perceive uh, the ancient world. Now, for us at Newcastle, it's really important to do this by working with partners. And so this project has been an opportunity for us to work with the Vinderlander Trust and the heritage sector at large, but also, of course, with Creative Assembly, uh, that is with industry. Working with these partners, we have the opportunity to create some new and exciting research together and hopefully get uh, more people involved in what we do here at Newcastle. And I like to think that we are making a difference through this project. We've been working with schools and the general public, and we've been making them a part of the work that we've been doing. In my field, this is something that we refer to as well. Citizen science is probably a term that many of you are familiar with, but we also use the term citizen humanities. And essentially what we mean by this is that we want to get people outside of academia involved in contributing to this research. So one of the great things about the projects that we've been working on with the Vindalander Trust and with Creative Assembly is that it's provided an opportunity to get feedback from people on what they do and don't like about the online exhibition and the games, uh, but even to come up with their own ideas for how we should develop this project moving forward. And ultimately, what we want to do with this is we want to encourage people to study more about history, about archaeology, about their own um, uh, heritage locally to them and of course also computer science because what we're doing in this project is we're combining the fields of history and archaeology with computer science and we want to encourage students well people of all ages really but in particular those in schools um, and students irrespective of their background who might not have considered studying these subjects before uh, to get more involved in them at school level. And that's one of the reasons why what we're working on is particularly targeted at the sort of key stage two group within the national curriculum where they will study the Romans, for example, but where also they're beginning to study computer science. Now, my work with the Vinderlander Trust goes back to 2016 to a project that we called the Missing Dead. Now, this was an interdisciplinary project within Newcastle University itself, because it wasn't just about me in the School of History, Classics and Archaeology, but we also worked with computer science. Um, the, and the particular part of the computer science department that we worked with is called the Game Lab. So I've got some good colleagues there, uh, Dr. Rich Davison, Professor Graham Morgan, with whom we worked on this project. And what we did is we employed an artist with support from the Arts Council England at Newcastle University to design the artwork for this game that's closely based upon the archaeological evidence that we have from Vindolanda itself. And on the right there of the slide, you can actually see uh, a little reconstruction of the site of Vindolanda. And then here on the left in the image, we've got an idea, a reconstruction of what uh, the game looks like when you're playing it on your phone. So what we wanted to do then uh, is to design a game that would get more people involved uh, in visiting the site of Vindolanda because the idea initially was to play this game on site. And that would encourage people to experience uh, the ancient world in a new way uh, through digital means. And designing games like this aren't a new thing ex uh, exactly. This is something that we're seeing increasingly now in the heritage sector. Uh, but it is something that was new for the Vindolanda Trust and it was new for us at Newcastle. And so this was a great opportunity for us to work together and to try and design something that would be uh, appealing to that school age market. The story uh, was designed by us at Newcastle University in collaboration with the Vindolanda Trust and the programming for the game was done by the Game Lab in Computer Science at Newcastle University. 
So this was the first project that we started with. Now, as a sideline for this project, uh, we also started to work with Creative Assembly, and this was during the COVID pandemic, where we realized that in launching the game, people wouldn't actually be able to play it on site to start with. And so we wanted to think of it as a project that also had online potential where people could effectively play the game at home. And we created some supplementary materials for this, these activity packs. This was a fantastic opportunity for us at Newcastle University to work not just with our partner, the Vindolanda Trust in the heritage sector, but also to work with industry and to use and bring together all that expertise uh, under one roof, so to speak. We contributed to these packs in terms of the information that they contain and the design and the layout. And as I mentioned, these were a response to the COVID pandemic. What we found through these packs and uh, through the game itself is that it created a sort of online and virtual encounter with the past that we hadn't initially planned for. And that actually opened up new avenues and opportunities in terms of where we saw our work with the Vindolanda Trust and Creative Assembly going in the future. And so that leads us basically to this project and what we wanted to achieve. Uh, this is where we're taking, we're taking that collaboration with industry, with Newcastle to the next level. This time, uh, as you'll have seen from the other uh, podcasts that have been produced uh, for this launch event, uh, we've designed an online exhibition and game, again, that can be played by the general public or in schools, at home. And the idea is to create a new encounter with the past. Again, this has been a collaboration with Newcastle University, Creative Assembly and the Vindolanda Trust. And from Newcastle's perspective, it's been very much an equal partnership where we've had the opportunity together with our industry and heritage partners to mentor the young programmer who has designed this game for us. Once again, we've been instrumental in supplying content and story design. Uh, and this is something that uh, has given us an opportunity as a project to embed our research here at Newcastle University into this new experience for the general public and students. Because ultimately, that's what we want to do at Newcastle University. And that brings me back to that idea of impact and engagement. We want to encourage new encounters with the past. We want to give as many people as opportunity, uh, many people as possible, the opportunity to experience this heritage for themselves, uh, to do more than simply study about the ancient world in a book, uh, and to think about how we can draw connections between different fields that seem different to start with. So computer science and history and archaeology might at first glance seem to be very separate fields, but by combining them, we can increase people's interest and enjoyment uh, of both. And that essentially is uh, what has made this project so exciting for us at Newcastle to be involved in and uh, where we hope to take it in the future through new collaboration, new experiences, and hopefully, hopefully getting even more people interested in the ancient world. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm here to talk about Creative Assembly's input into the Vindolanda Adventure Project. So for those of you who don't know who CA is, um, just to give a little bit of background, we were founded in 1987, so we have a development history spanning over 35 years. Creative Assembly is the largest and one of the longest running game studios in the UK. We were purchased by Sega in 2005 and are now home to almost 850 world-class professionals, both here in Horsham in the UK and also Sofia, Bulgaria. We're best known for the long running Total War series, which has sold over 20 million copies. CA has also grown as a developer of premium console titles. With the critically acclaimed Alien Isolation in 2014, CA set a standard for survival horror and in partnership with 343 Studios, brought our strategic expertise to Xbox with Halo Wars 2. We are now in full development of our new first person shooter, Hyenas, and other new unannounced projects. Meanwhile, Total War continue to build on a successful partnership with Games Workshop and take opportunities to branch into new business models and new territories with the record breaking Three Kingdoms. 
So just to quickly introduce who I am, I'm Joanna Green, the Co Corporate Social Responsibility Lead at Creative Assembly. I sit within the recruitment team at CA, but I work on our legacy project. I organise all the schools outreach that we do and also work with other industry bodies and partners as part of our education provision, whilst also looking after the work we do with our charity of the year, which is voted for by our studio. My colleague works with students aged 16 and over and collaborates with colleges and universities as well. So what actually is the Legacy Project? Um, through this, we aim to support education across the curriculum, giving students from preschool all the way up to higher education, different opportunities to raise aspirations, access a greater understanding of subject knowledge and provide insights into the games industry. We have worked with Newcastle University and through them we were introduced to Vindolanda. The opportunity to work to create a variety of resources together made for the perfect relationship, bringing the fact that Vindolanda is such an important World Heritage Site and with a wealth of information on the Romans and has a large footfall of school students immersing themselves in that world, the tie-in with our own gaming titles made for the perfect way to cross over education on bringing historical worlds to life, both with the artefacts and the site, and onto the digital platform. Through our historical games, to Rome Total War, Total War Rome 2, and Total War Rome Remastered, we have a unique link with the Roman era, which we have bought the time period that Vindolander existed through to digital gaming. The brilliant work that Vindolander are doing to carve out what happened in the past allows the digital industry a far more accurate insight when it comes to bringing historical worlds into the game and media. So we started collaboration um, with the, Mit the Missing Dead app project to add content to the work in packs. Um, we were able to contribute various fact files as well. We have really, really enjoyed working throughout the past year on the Vindolanda adventure, which has been a great project to combine the different elements of Vindolanda, Newcastle University and Creative Assembly. To aid in bringing the concept to a reality, we were able to provide mentoring in both design and programming for Isaiah as he built the game. Our principal technical artist was also able to bring the setting of the game to life by providing the artwork for the in-game environment that you see as you play the game. We were very happy with how this greatened the immersive experience for those playing. And finally, through the archives within the game, you will find a wealth of information CA have contributed on the different roles within the games industry and activities to complete that relate both to the discipline, but also the story being told and embedding the contents found within the Vindeland website. So it has been a fantastic partnership and we hope that those accessing the virtual exhibition will get many different experiences and learn a wealth of information while of course enjoying playing the game. So thank you very much um, for helping us take part. Hi everyone, my name is Isaiah and I'm a master's student studying computer game engineering with Newcastle University. I was the person responsible for the game design portion of Vindolanda Adventure and I would like to explain a little bit about the background of the development process, including what languages and tools we used, as well as what considerations we had in mind whilst designing the project. Firstly, I will give you some background about the software used to create Vindolanda Adventure and my prior experience with these tools to hopefully paint a clearer picture as to how much expertise is required when beginning a project of your own. The main two components used in the development of the project was Unity and C Sharp. Unity is a game engine which can be used to create 2D or 3D games, as well as various interactive simulations, both within and outside the field of gaming. Prior to starting the project, my only experience with Unity was a short month during my university team-based module and another month of independent study in preparation to make Vindolanda Adventure. 
This should boast the beginner-friendly nature of Unity, and while there were still many limitations and things I had to learn during the creation of the project, there was no specific requirement to have years of experience before attempting to make something. C Sharp is a coding language that pairs well with Unity, and is mostly responsible for making the items within your game do something. If the player clicks on a button and it makes the character jump, or takes the player to another page, C Sharp is most likely responsible for the back end of that interaction. The idea of coding can seem quite intimidating to some, and C Sharp is not a beginner friendly language compared with some others. However, I would like to mention that there are several online resources that aim to make the learning process more seamless for beginners. Before starting my masters, I had prior experience with other coding languages such as Python, but zero experience with C Sharp, and I made use of these resources to quickly familiarize myself and be able to write code. Personally, I made use of the Udemy learning platform the most, but there are several others out there for anyone interested in developing different skills at your own pace. Hopefully, that should give you an idea of how much experience is required before creating your own projects, but do keep in mind that these figures aren't a hard and fast rule, as everyone learns at different rates based on experience. So long as you develop your own pace, you should be able to create something in the end. Next, I will talk about Vindolanda Adventure itself, and the conclusions we came to about its design. We aim to create an educational exhibition teaching players about Vindolanda and how the gaming industry can be integrated with history. Among those two objectives, we also wanted to create a fun experience that felt like a video game to improve engagement with the content and still present the material in a clear, concise fashion. The game would be focused loosely on telling the stories of characters Tagamas and Lepidina and was set to launch on September 11th, which corresponds with Claudia Severa's birthday. As such, it felt appropriate to set the narrative theme of the exhibition with the context of attending the dinner party that she would be hosting. This led to collectively brainstorming for different activities that Tagamas and Lepidina would normally do during daily life at the fort, or maybe activities that would be done in preparation for a dinner party. By looking at the artifacts discovered at Vindolanda, we could begin constructing stories that linked the different items together and provided a basis for our game. It was also a nice idea to see what other stories children could come up with regarding the characters involved, so we provided a space for players to submit their own creations via the archives, which we will see a bit later. By creating the final objective of attending the dinner party and quests that must be completed beforehand, Players are incentivized to explore the entire exhibition before ending their session. Thanks to our artists, we could create an authentic looking environment with sprites made by using the Universal Sprite Sheet Character Creator. Ultimately, we decided to make a 2D game as the capabilities of Unity would be more than sufficient to create the experience we were looking for, and 3D games are generally considered more difficult to produce. Players will walk around the town and enter buildings corresponding to the two different minigames or other informational pages. There is an added option to teleport to these locations from the pause button located at the top left corner of the screen for players wishing to access specific areas more quickly. There are four different locations which seemed to be an appropriate amount considering the exhibition is intended to be a short experience that children could enjoy during the classroom period. Next, we will briefly look at these four locations in a bit more detail. While considering what Tagamas would do during his everyday life at the fort, we decided to create a platforming minigame, which would simulate his sparring routine with other soldiers. The overall mechanics were kept simplified so as not to detract from the main learning objectives, with jump and attack being the only two options besides walking. Players will navigate through the two levels with a boss fight at the end and collect his amphora filled with olives as a reward. There is historical context behind the reward, which serves to stimulate interest in Tagamas' story and encourage players to find out more about his connection with the Olives. The archives, as we mentioned earlier, allows players to explore a wide range of content about both Vindolanda and gaming. There are hyperlinks to external material provided by both Vindolanda Trust and Creative Assembly, as well as additional activities for children to enjoy and share their work. For anyone interested in aspects of audio, art, programming or archaeology, there is content that should appeal to you, as well as many other areas of interest that are highlighted within the archives. 
The gallery serves as an online museum where players can read up on specific artefacts that can also be found on site at Vindolanda. This should help form a connection with the content as children can be looking out for things they see on the game when they visit the site. This information is what players will be tested on during the second mini game of the exhibition, which comes in the form of a quiz. Players must answer at least six out of 10 questions correctly to pass and all the answers can be found in the gallery, further encouraging players to explore the content in order to be successful. The quiz acts as a fun way for children to pick up more knowledge about Roman history and feel rewarded for their efforts. Once the player has gone through these four locations, they can attend the dinner party, which congratulates the player on completing the exhibition and proceeds to show the credits page. This concludes my talk about the design process behind Vindolanda Adventure. I would like to thank everyone involved in the project, and if you have any further questions regarding the exhibition, you may leave a comment down below or send us an email. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Claire, Joanna, and Isaiah for that. Uh, I just wanted to take the last few minutes to share with you some initial feedback and thoughts on the project. We did take the prototype of the um, game to uh, try it out on one of our local schools, the Seal First School in Hexham. This type of testing is imperative when working with children because they do in many ways see things differently than we do as adults. And you have to try it out with the children to make sure that what you're doing is actually working. For example, the training ground in which Tagamas goes and practices his sword play was their favorite part of the game. Not hugely surprising, but we were able to expand that within the game um, and add an extra level. And then the children asked us, what were we gonna call the game? And to be honest, we, we hadn't really thought of that yet. Uh, so we turned that question around and asked the children, what should we call it? And they actually were the ones that came up with Vindolanda Adventure. We are still in the early days of the game's release and seeing how it's being used, but there is legacy for this project. So not only are we seeing our schools using it as pre or post visit work back in the classroom, but we're also seeing that, it's, that the project is breaking down those geographic barriers, not only in the UK, but beyond. You can see in the pie chart here that we're seeing it being used outside of the UK, as well as when you look, drill it down and look at the UK itself, there is the top cities of London and Brighton, which are far beyond a day trip to the actual site itself. So it's showing that, that people who are not visiting the site and having a farther spread and reach may be encouraging people to come to the site in the future. And then there's a softer potential or legacy there that is to hopefully help children through the digital media, which is how they communicate, to think about careers in computer sciences and in heritage, which I think is really, really important at how we, we look at, at the future of who's going to protect our sites. And last but not least, I just wanted to let you know, in case you were interested and you are not terribly far away from the Vindolanda site, we do have members of the Creative Assembly team coming to Vindolanda next weekend on October the 29th and 30th, 2022, to actually have game consoles here where you can play the Total War Rome Remastered um, and have a go and see if you, if you enjoy it. Um, also have a fabulous look at the site in which created the Vindolanda adventure. We will be answering any questions in the comments below, so please share your feedback, play the game, share Vindolanda adventure with your friends, and subscribe to the Vindolanda Trust channel for more updates about what we're doing at our Roman sites. Thanks for watching.